I'm Patty Fernandez and I'm an art teacher. Visit my website at pattyfernandezartist.com. Okay, let's draw. Today's project is drawing the parts of the brain. And this is going to be a little different than we usually do, um, so just follow along. I take one finger at the top and underneath I put a dot. And from that dot I'm going to draw curve line, curve line, curve line, curve line, curve line, curve line, and leave it floating. Come back to the dot and we're going to go towards the right. Curve line, curve line, curve line, curve line, curve line. Keep going, keep going, and connect. Inside, just pick a, a, a point and just do some curve lines. This is a labeling activity. So we're just going to get parts of our drawing drawn. Then we're going to label it. And then we're going to color. But we might do these all in a different order than usual because a medical or a physical diagram like this is different than drawing a picture. So curve line, curve line. As an example, I'm going to draw a straight line and this is the frontal lobe. We'll explain this once we get it all drawn. Now I come over here on the right hand side, <clears throat> excuse me, and I draw a curve line curve line, curve line, curve line, wavy line, wavy line, wavy line, curve line, curve line, curve line, connect. I come right to this indentation and I'm just going to draw a curve line down, wavy line, curve, curve, come up, curve line down, wavy line, wavy line, curve line, curve line. It doesn't matter how you draw these parts curve line, curve line. Your brain is wrinkled, so everybody's wrinkles are going to be a little bit different, but the spacing is important. This, <clears throat> excuse me again, is the parietal, I'm probably saying that wrong, parietal lobe. Okay, and again, we'll explain what they all do in a minute. Now I come back over here to the left, right about here, and I'm just going to draw a curve line down, Curve line up, curve line over, curve line up, and connect. Inside I'm going to do those little curve lines and just put a little curve line out, little curve line, and up. This is part of the temporal lobe. So what I'm doing is I'm drawing my brain, but I'm labeling it at the same time so I don't forget what I'm doing. Now I come over on the right hand side and I'm going to draw a curve line, curve line, curve line down, curve line over, up, connect. I'm just going to draw a little curve line, curve line up, little curve line, little curve line, curve line up, little curve line. Okay. Now I come back over here on the left and I'm going to draw a curve line in, right underneath it, curve line in, right underneath it, slightly curved line floating. I come right here at this point and I'm just going to draw a curve line over, up, and connect. All right, I already forgot to label this one, so come back over here on this side. This is another part of the temporal, temporal, whoops, temporal lobe. Got to check that spelling. Okay, and then now inside this space I draw a straight line, straight line, straight line. This is the cerebellum. We're going to have to check all these spelling. I think I'm getting them right. Cerebellum. And now we come back to this section right here in the middle part and we're just going to draw a slightly curved line and leave it floating. This section, draw a straight line, is the pons. This is the brain stem.
Now let me see if I got it all. There's other parts, but I think this is the main thing. All right. Now, instead of telling you what everything was and coloring, what I'm going to do first, so that I don't forget that these are the main parts of it, I'm going to take a red crayon, and I'm just going to do a wavy line around these so I know what each one is. I'm going to write the definitions, but that's in the next part. But I don't want to forget that these are the main sections, because this can get kind of crowded once you start writing the definitions. And to remind myself of what I'm doing, anywhere on your paper, just write parts of the brain and maybe put a wavy line around it too. It's going to get a little crowded. All right, now we're ready to color. Now, if we opened up your brain, we would not see a rainbow. But because we're going to be talking about the parts and what they each do, it's hard to do that if you can't see the section that we're talking about. So, the frontal lobe right now is this section, and I'm coloring it purple. If you opened up your brain, it would be gray matter. It's usually what they call it. But you would not see a rainbow of colors. But we're doing that so that we can see what we're doing. <clears throat> so this front part, <clears throat> the frontal lobe, I'm doing purple. The parietal lobe, which I'm so sure I'm saying wrong, I'm going to do red, light red. Do everything light. Don't color dark because you don't want to lose all your wrinkles. So this is the next set, section, red. Then, this is also part of the temporal lobe, I think. So I'm going to color it not the same color, but I'm going to make it yellow because it controls a different part of our body's actions. In the front, or front part of the temporal lobe, I'm going to do light green. Because once we start labeling with definitions of what each parts do, they delineate into different sections. The uh, cerebellum, I'm going to do pink. And the brain stem, I'm going to do apricot. You can do it orange, yellow, doesn't matter. Just so that you know that these are all each the second, second types of parts of the brain. Okay, so when you do a, a, a when you do a chart of different parts of uh, any body part, they're pretty complicated. So we've already gotten our main drawing. We now have our main parts of the brain. Now we're going to list what each part does. It does a lot more than just what this. So um, now we're going to switch back to labeling. Okay, the frontal lobe over here, it is involved with your motivation, motivation, attention, self-control, and it has a huge effect on your personality. So, It has a lot to do with who you are and how you act. The parietal lobe over here, this processes, is in charge of processing sensory information. So that comes under how you feel, touch, that kind of stuff. The temporal lobe over here has to do with hearing, and speech, talking. The cerebellum over here has to do with movement of your body, movement and control. This determines how uncoordinated or how coordinated you are. So if you can't catch a ball when somebody throws it at you, like me, it probably is your cerebellum that's 
whacking you out. The pawns, the brain stem, all of that transmits transmits all the information all the information from the body to the brain okay so this is this main part right here is like the conductor like the freeway for your body to the brain okay so now you can see wow this has gotten really crowded so you might want to stop the video here so that you can get this information or perhaps look it up for the definitions of each one okay let's see what this looks like all colored in okay here is my finished parts of the brain it's the brain is so interesting this is why they say wear a seat belt because you don't want to have your head injuries it crash you crash into a windshield and the next thing you know you know you've lost all of this part of your self-control your personality changes all of this also controls your movements how you walk how you talk the brain very important okay bye bye